Hello, good morning students. Welcome to the Aquarium of the Pacific. My name is Erin and I'm joining you today all the way from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. I'm really excited to get to do a lot of counting with you today. We're going to be counting animals all over the ocean and learning more about these animals. Now, just like all Aquarium Online Academies, we do have a number that you can reach us at. So if you're watching this Monday morning uh, at 9 a.m., then you can text us right here. This number is 562 286 1838. Text us right here at this number. If you have any questions or if you have any answers to my questions, we would love to get to answer those right now live on the air. We also have an email line. So if you're watching this after Monday morning, you can also. Uh, Email us here at live at lbaop.org and we can answer your questions uh, when we get a chance. So again, welcome. I'm really excited to get to count with you today. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our first animal that we're going to be counting. <gasps> look at that. It's a sea turtle. Now let's go ahead and see. There's just one sea turtle here in this picture. Can everyone say one with me? Hold up one finger. Perfect. Now what do you notice about this sea turtle? I'm looking closely at this sea turtle and the first thing that I see is that it has this nice shell. What do you think that the shell is used for? Why do animals like turtles and tortoises have shells? Why is that shell helpful for them? If you're thinking that shell might be used to protect them, that's a really great observation. That shell is a nice hard layer that helps to protect it. Now, if you've seen turtles on land, you might know that turtles can pull into their shell, pull their arms and their head into their shell, and that's a good way of protecting themselves. But look closely at this sea turtle. That is not something that sea turtles can do. Look at how you can see its neck right here, and you can see its flippers connected right here. So they cannot pull into their shell shell, but that shell still protects them really well. And we can also see the face. Look at this face. This mouth is perfect for eating things like fish or um, some types of sea turtles even eat things like sea grasses and algaes, um, jellies. They love to eat jellies. Very cool. So that is one sea turtle. Let's see what else we can count today. <gasps> Wow, look at these puffins. Let's count these puffins together. Looks like there's one, two puffins. Hold up two fingers for me. Again, if you have any questions about these puffins, go ahead and text us right here or about any of the animals we're learning about. Text us right here at this number. What do you notice about these puffins? Hmm. When I'm looking at them, I'm seeing some different colors. I see that there's black right here. And I see there's white right here. Oh, it looks like they also have some white on their face. And then look at these big beaks. They've got these really big beaks. Let's talk a bit about their coloration. Their colors are perfect because their colors are great for counter shading. Uh, so what that means is that the puffin has black on the back and white on the front, and that helps it to blend in while it's flying through the air. So it's flying through the air. If there's something above it looking down, then that black back helps it to blend in with the dark colors below them. But if there's something underneath it looking up at the puffin, then the white belly helps it to blend in with all the light coming in from the sky. And when we think of ocean animals, we can find lots of different types of ocean animals that also have this counter shading. I'm thinking of animals like penguins and orcas and sharks and lots of animals that are darker on the top and lighter on the bottom, just like this puffin. Now we also notice their beaks. Look at these big beaks. When you're looking at birds, the beaks can tell you a lot about what they eat. Now puffins are a diving bird, so that means that they fly up in the air and then they dive into the water and grab their food from the water. So they're eating things uh, like fish and um, small animals that live in the ocean, and they're really great at diving. Now this is what the colors look like right now, but they actually change colors throughout the year. So they have different colors in the summer and different colors in the winter. So again, let's count these one last time. There's one, two puffins, two puffins. Let's see what animal we're going to count next. <gasps> Look at those clownfish. Let's count the clownfish all together. Ready? One, 
two, three. There are three clownfish. Show me three fingers. It looks like I'm blocking one of them here. Now clownfish are really cool because they also have camouflage. Remember we were just learning about camouflage with our puffins. And these animals have camouflage as well, but theirs is really different. So if you look at their camouflage, do you see they have these stripes? They've got these white stripes and those white stripes help them to blend in with the sea anemone that they live in. So the sea anemone has all these tentacles and the white stripes help them to blend in with these tentacles. Have you ever gotten to touch a sea anemone before? Maybe you touched it and it felt sticky. The reason for that is that they have these sticky um, stinging cells on their tentacles and those stinging cells help them to catch their food. Now when you touch the sea anemone, you didn't feel that sticking it or you didn't feel that sting because you have thick skin on your fingers. So all you feel is stickiness. But for fish, that sting can, can actually be enough to hurt them and that's how they catch their food. But our clownfish has a special coating on its body. It's a special layer of mucus. And that mucus coating helps to keep them safe so that they're able to swim around inside the sea anemone and not get stung. So they're able to live in that sea anemone. Now let's count those clownfish one more time. Ready? There's one, two, three clownfish. Three clownfish living in this sea anemone. I wonder what animal we can count next. And we'll ask Miss Talia to put that phone number back up for you. So if you have any questions, you're welcome to text those questions into us at 562-286-1838. All right, let's see what animal we're counting next. Wow, look at these seahorses. All right, we can see these seahorses, very cool. So it looks like there's one, two, three, and four. There's a fourth one hiding at the very bottom. Four seahorses, can you show me your four fingers for four seahorses? I see that the seahorses are hanging on to this piece of green seagrass. What color are the seahorses? What color are they? Did you say yellow? If you said yellow, you are correct. These seahorses are yellow. What do you notice about these seahorses? I noticed that they have this long tail. And in that video earlier, they were using that tail to hold on. Now, I wonder why they would like to hold on. Any ideas why the seahorse needs to hold on? Hmm. Now it looks like they aren't very good swimmers. If you look really closely, do you see right next to their face? They've got these little fins. Can you make your seahorse fins? They've got these little tiny fins next to their face. They also have a little fin on their back. Can you make a little seahorse fin on your back? But that's all they have for swimming. So they're not very good swimmers. Very good. Those of you that said yellow, you are correct. These are yellow. Thank you very much for texting in those answers. Um, so they're not very good swimmers. There's a great view of that on the back. Very good. So because they're not good swimmers, these seahorses need a way to make sure they don't float away in the water. So they use their tails to hold on. Can you think of another animal that uses its tail to hold on? I'll give you a hint. There's an animal that lives on land that uses its tail to do the same thing. Any ideas? Hmm. If anyone is thinking of monkey, that's a great example of an animal that uses its tail to hold on. Now we did get a question on our text line. Someone was wondering, what do seahorses eat? That's a really good question. Now you can tell a lot about what an animal eats by looking at their mouth. So you can see that this seahorse has a pretty small mouth. So he's probably not eating big food. It's probably eating really tiny, tiny food um, with that small mouth. So the seahorse is actually an ambush predator. So it hides in the seagrass and it waits for its food to swim by and then it snaps up its face really quickly and it's able to eat. We'll see this video here of this seahorse 
and they're able to eat. And they feed on tiny things um, like plankton, like things like mysid shrimps and brine shrimps and really tiny shrimp that lives in the water. Watch how this seahorse kind of snaps its head and grabs onto its food really quickly. Very cool. You can see some of the foods floating around. So they're eating really small plankton that floats around in the water. Now, one of the coolest things about seahorses is that seahorses are different than a lot of other animals because it's actually the boys that have the babies. So it's the males that have the babies. So what seahorses do is the female will actually transfer the eggs. Well, the eggs will be fertilized and they'll transfer them to the male. And the male has a pocket where it grows the eggs and it basically raises the eggs until they're ready to be born. And then they're born from the male. And that helps to make sure that the male and the female are doing equal equal amounts of work with those babies. Um, we might have a picture of a, some baby seahorses that we can see. Baby seahorses are so, so cute. They're very, very tiny. Um, they look kind of about the size of an eyelash. So they're really, really small. Um, but the, ba the males will have hundreds of these babies born all at once. Uh, we're going to see if Miss Tolly can pull up a picture. Again, feel free to text us if you have any uh, questions or if you have any answers to my questions. We have Kaya over here on the text line that's sharing those questions with me so that we can make sure we get a chance to answer those questions. We'll see if there's any luck on those, uh, on those baby seahorses. Oh, it looks like we got a question. Oh, are there any predators of seahorses? Thank you so much for that question. Uh, there are a lot of predators of seahorses, especially when they're babies because they're so very, very tiny. So they're eaten by a lot of things. They can be eaten by fish. Um, probably bigger fish is one of their main predators. They're definitely predators, though, of the seahorses. And look at this tiny baby seahorse. So here you can see this piece of seagrass for size. So look at how tiny it is compared to that size. But look, just like the adult, it's using its tail to hold on to that piece of seagrass. And just like the adult, we can see their tiny, tiny fin and their tiny fins on the side of their head. Very cool. Let's go back to that video of our seahorse so we can count the seahorses one more time. Ready? There's one, two, three, four. We have four seahorses living here. Very cool. Let's see what we're going to count next. <gasps> Look at this sea star. Let's count this all together. Ready? There's one, two, three, four, five. Five arms on the sea star. And we'll get that phone number back up here so that you can text us any questions you have about the sea star. I'd like to know though, what do you notice about the sea star? One of the things that I'm seeing right away is this little thing right here. This little thing right here is actually called, it has a big science word for it. It's called a madreporite. And a madreporite is used for exchanging water with their habitat. So that's how they kind of get new water inside their body and get rid of their old water. It's through that madreporite. Now this sea star, it has these five arms and on the underside of their arms are something called tube feet. We'll see if we can see a picture of those tube feet so you can see how those tube feet work. Basically, they look like little tiny straws with suction cups at the end. What do you think they use those tube feet for? What's the purpose of those tube feet? If you're thinking that they use them to hold on, you are correct. Here you can see the underside. Look at all these thousands of tube feet. That would be a lot to count, wouldn't it? So they use those tube feet to hold on and also to move. So when you see stars, when you see a sea star moving, then they're using those tube feet to move across a rock. Oh, great. Someone says that it is orange. Great observation. This sea star is orange. I've seen sea stars that are many, many different colors, though. So they can come in lots of different colors. Maybe they're purple or pink or blue or orange or yellow. Lots of different colors. Now, here you can see these tube feet as they're moving along a rock. Look at how they move. They're able to all move independently, and they can control the movement of the sea star. That's how they're able to crawl along the rocks. Now, they can also use those tube feet to taste. So that's how they're able to figure out what their food tastes like. 
Now we have a really good question. How do sea stars eat food? That's a great question. Uh, so what they do, they actually use these tube feet to help them. And what they do, they love to eat things that live in shells, like a clam or a mussel, and they have two shells, and then there's an animal living inside that shell. So they use these tube feet and they grab onto those shells and they slowly just open it up, just a teeny tiny bit, pry it open, pry it open, and then they spit their stomachs out. So they spit their stomach out into the food, they digest that, clamor that muscle, they make like a muscle smoothie, and then they slurp it up into their body. And that's how they're able to eat their food. Uh, so they're able to get all their food just like that. Can you imagine if we all sat down uh, to eat maybe pizza, and we were all sitting there, and then we all spit our stomachs out onto the table and made a pizza smoothie and then slurped our stomachs back into our body. Now, this is a really cool picture. This is, you can see the stomach right here, and then all the little tube feet spread out on the window here. So that's how they digest their food, is using that stomach, where they spit that stomach out to digest their food. Very cool. Now let's go ahead and count the arms. We won't count the tube feet because that'll take forever, but let's count the arms on this sea star. So there's one, two, three, four, and then there's one up here, five. So this sea star has five arms. Show me five fingers. All right, let's see what else we can count today. Oh, look at these little animals. Have you ever been to the tide pool and seen these animals? These are called limpets. Now we're only gonna count these bigger. You can see there's kind of these small ones here. We're just gonna count the big white limpets all together. Ready? We'll start over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six limpets. Can you show me six fingers for our six limpets? Now these can be found in places like tide pools and they're actually uh, a type of snail. So they have this protective shell on their back. Oh, we got a question. What's a limpet? Great question. That's one that a lot of us have never heard before. Um, so they have this protective shell on their back and then on, underneath that shell, they have a sticky foot just like a snail. So they use that sticky foot to inch along a surface. Now limpets are really cool because they will make basically a parking spot. So they'll have this one spot that they live and they might kind of leave that spot, but they'll always come back to it. And sometimes you can see in the rocks, you can see these spaces that are kind of uh, the spots where the limpets have dug out. So these are like a type of snail. Now I wonder how does this shell help to keep them safe? Hmm. Now we know that the turtle shell helped to protect it from predators, so it probably does the same thing, but the limpet shell has another job as well. And that's because the limpet lives in a tide pool. And if you've been to the beach and you've seen tide pools, you know that the water comes up and then the water goes down. And throughout the day, you'll have high tide and low tide, high tide and low tide. And during low tide, sometimes the limpets are a little bit out of the water. And if they're out of the water, they might dry out. So what they can do is they suck themselves onto the rock really, really tight, and they kind of make this safe barrier, and it's nice and shaded and cool, and they can hold on to some of their moisture, and that helps to make sure that they don't dry out. So that even when it's low tide and they're out of the water, they can stay nice and, uh, and moist and cool inside of their shell. So that shell helps to protect them from these really extreme habitats that they live in. Very cool. Um, looks like we might have another question coming in. Ooh, how do they eat? Um, so like other snails, they have basically a scraping, ra it's called a radula. It's this like little scraping plate. And so they can kind of scrape algae off of surfaces. All right, so again, let's count our limpets right here. One more time, just the big white limpets. There's one, two, three, four, five, Six, and show me six fingers for our six limpets. I wonder what we're gonna count next. Let's wait and see what's gonna pop up. Wow, look at these garden eels. Let's count them all together. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six. We just counted six. Is there one more? If you have eagle eyes, you might have spotted this 
seventh garden eel hiding in the sand. Can I see seven fingers for our seven garden eels? There's that one hiding in the sand. And this garden eel is showing us exactly what's so special about garden eels. And that's the fact that they burrow into the sand and that helps to protect them. So they might stick their heads out of the water, maybe or out of the sand, look for some food. Uh, but as soon as a predator comes by, they're all gonna duck down into the sand really, really quickly. Just like this seventh garden eel right here is showing us. What else do you notice about these garden eels? I see, oh wow, look at this beautiful picture up close. I see some big spots. Looks like there are two big spots on the side of this garden eel. Now, lots of animals that live in the ocean have these big spots. They're called false eyes or fake eyes. And the reason they have them is because that can be confusing to predators. So if an animal sees a, if a predator sees this really big eye, this big false eye, they might think that that animal must be really big because it has a really big eye. So maybe they won't try to feed on it. The other reason the false eye is important is if you saw this animal and you saw its eye was here, then you might think it was gonna swim a different direction because uh, its face is in a different location. So it kind of confuses the predators because it makes them look like they're gonna swim differently than they are actually gonna swim. So those two fake eyes are confusing for the predators. So it helps them uh, to keep them safe. Oh, we got another question. It looks grumpy. Oh, he does look like he has a little frowning face, doesn't it? I think that's just the way that its face is shaped though. And it probably has something to do with its food. Um, does anyone know what garden eels eat? Is it just plankton? So uh, garden eels, just like our seahorses, eat tiny plankton like mice and shrimps and uh, other small plankton that lives in the water. Oh, here you can see, looks like some brine shrimp or some mice and shrimp floating through the water. You can actually see them grabbing onto this food. They're kind of grabbing onto this food. Our next question is how long do they get? Um, we'll see if we can get an official answer on that. I think it's about 12 inches or so, but we're gonna look that up just to be sure. That's a great question. You've stumped us here at the aquarium. Uh, but they do have, you notice that they do have part of their body that's hiding in the sand. So. Um, I've seen these animals out scuba diving before in the ocean. They're really exciting when you get to see a whole um, garden, like a whole field of these garden eels. But they can be 16 inches. Wow, that's way longer than I thought. They can be up to 16 inches. So that's longer than a ruler. That's about, you know, this long or so. And they can be up to a half an inch in diameter. So um, these ones that we have here are actually pretty small, it looks like, because they're not quite that big around. Um, so these garden eels can get to be much bigger. So it looks like they only put part of their body out of the, out of the sand. Great observation. Let's count these garden eels all together one more time. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, and our hiding one here, seven. We have seven garden eels. Let's see what else we can count today. Oh, wow, look at this octopus. I wonder what we should count. Maybe the arms? Let's count the arms of the octopus. Looks like there's one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, there are eight arms on the octopus, but I bet you already knew that before we counted, didn't you? I'm looking closely at these arms and I see all of these suction cups. Just like the sea star had um, their tube feet, these suction cups are really similar. It helps them to hold on to things. And they've got all these suction cups for holding on to their food, grabbing onto their food. But they look a little bit different than the sea stars, don't they? Remember the sea stars looked like a straw with a suction cup at the end? These ones are just a suction cup and they're on their body. Very cool. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to text us. We'd love to hear your questions that you have about our octopus. This particular octopus is a giant Pacific octopus that lives here at the aquarium. And look at here, you can see its eye. Look at its eye. Oh, and watch its arms moving, those eight arms moving. Sometimes if you watch them closely, you can also see them change colors. We'll see if we see any color changes. I see a little bit of white kind of poking through. 
Very cool. Look at all these suction cups on the arm. You'll see some of the suction cups are really big and some of the suction cups are really small. This octopus looks like it's trying to grab the camera, doesn't it? So we mentioned how octopus can change color. That's one adaptation they have that helps them to camouflage. They can change their color and their texture so they can go from being bumpy to smooth uh, to help protect themselves from predators. It's a really great way to camouflage. In fact, if you ever see an octopus and you know exactly where it is and you're looking right at it and then you look away and you look back, it might be hard to find it because they're so good at camouflage. They are masters of camouflage. Very cool. Let's watch this octopus here. Looks like we've got a video here of this octopus. Oh, wow. Watch it swimming. Look at those color changes. It went from a dark color to a red. And look, now it's white. And we got to see that color change and that texture change. And now it's blending in and looking just like a rock. Oh, and back to red. Very cool. You can see some of those really dramatic changes in color. It looks like we got a, um, oh, how many hearts does an octopus have? Great question. Octopus have three hearts. Just like their relatives, the squid, they have three different hearts um, that help to pump all of the fluids throughout their body. Let's see what else we're going to count next. Now this one's a little bit different. We're gonna count something on my document camera here. We're gonna count shells. Ready? It looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine shells. Can you show me nine fingers? nine shells. Now most of these are snail shells. So these are going to be different types of shells that snails can live in. And if you notice, they can be all different sorts of shapes and sizes. So we have some really big shells here that are almost the size of my hand. And then we also have some smaller shells. So snails can have all different sizes of shells and they have different shapes. Do you see how this one is kind of spiraling up to the top? Uh, versus this one is kind of spiraling sideways. But one thing we notice is that most shells will form some sort of spiral. And that's because the snail that lives in the, inside of the shell is actually responsible for building the shell. So as the snail gets bigger, that shell will get bigger and bigger too. So you might have heard of hermit crabs and how hermit crabs will move from one shell to another. Snails don't do that. So a snail will be born and it will live in that same shell. And just like you're able to grow hair and you're able to grow fingernails, the snail will just grow that shell as it gets bigger. So when it starts, it'll be in the very, very tip of that shell. And then as it grows bigger, that shell will grow bigger with it too. And the shell is like their home. Now, just like the limpets that we saw and just like this, the turtle that we saw, the shells are a really great way of protecting themselves. Um, so they're able to protect them. Now, you might notice this shell looks a little bit different. It's not spiraled. And that's because this shell is from a clam. And this is actually only, it's a little hard to see. We'll see if we can fix the lighting a little bit. This, oh, there we go. This shell is only half of the clam shell. So the clam would have two shells and uh, it would have two shells just like that, and then the animal would live on the inside. Very cool. So these are different types of shells that live in the ocean. The one last shell I wanna point out, this is our abalone, um, and this is a type of snail that lives right here off the coast of Southern California, and they can get to be even bigger than this. This is actually a pretty small abalone. All right, now let's count these shells one more time. Ready, there's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine shells. And let's look at one last animal that we can count today. And that's our giant spider crab. Let's count the legs. Ready? One, two, three. There's one hiding down here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
10. This spider crab has 10 legs. And you'll see that the front two legs have claws. Can I see your pinchers or your claws for the spider crab? They're pinchers that they use to grab onto their food. Now, this is a giant spider crab. They can, uh, they get to be very, very large, stretching all the way from one arm to another. And they're found in the deep sea. So they're a, a very, very cold water animal. Now, students, I have had so much fun learning with all of you today. Let's put that number up one more time so that you can text us in. Teachers, if you have a group of students watching with you, we love to get the exact numbers of people that are viewing. It helps us out with all of our recording. So if you can text us how many students you had viewing with you today to 562-286-1838. So send those numbers in, teachers. Thank you so much for um, joining us today. And if you have any other questions, you can reach out to us here at our email address. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Goodbye.